this is going to be a study on the subject of tribulation guest appearances. In movies and TV shows, you will many times have an old character brought back as a guest appearances. And this is get, to get old fans interested. And it is cool for them to see old characters with the new characters. And this idea is done in the Bible. There are men in the Bible who are not on this world today who will actually make a return in the tribulation time period. And this is one of those things that it's speculation. I'm not teaching any of these things that, as an absolute fact. I'm not basing my salvation on it, on whether or not I believe these things. I'm not basing your salvation on it if you reject everything I have to say. If someone rejects everything I have to say in this, it doesn't bother me a bit. But if you think that it's far-fetched that men from the Old Testament could revisit this world in the tribulation, remember that you most likely believe that the two witnesses in Revelation chapter 11 are Moses and Elijah. Keep that in mind before you think it's too far-fetched. But first, let's look at these two guys. Let's look at Moses and Elijah. Remember, they also came back once before and talked to Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Also keep that in mind. But if you look at Deuteronomy chapter 34, verses 5 through 7, it says, So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord, and he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab, over against Beth Peor. But no man knoweth of his sepulcher unto this day. And Moses was an hundred and twenty years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. So Moses died, but nobody knew where he was buried. And then you hop way over to Jude in the New Testament, at the end of the New Testament before the book of Revelation, and it talks about Moses' body again. I think that's interesting that the Lord chose to talk about the body of Moses right before the book of Revelation. But in Jude, verse 9, it says, Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, Durst not bring against him a railing, railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. So Michael and the devil were disputing about Moses' body. The devil doesn't want him coming back, it seems like. So Moses died, and no one knows of his sepulcher until this day, and Michael and the devil were disputing about the body. And now let's look at Elijah. In 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 11, it says, And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, Behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. So this chariot of fire and horses of fire comes down and takes Elijah up to the third heaven. Unlike the Old Testament saints, Enoch and Elijah got to go to the third heaven because they were translated. See, all the other Old Testament saints, they went to paradise in the heart of the earth until the blood of Jesus Christ was shed. But Mo uh, Enoch and Elijah did a different thing. But So Moses died, and his body wasn't found. Elijah didn't die, and he went up by a whirlwind into heaven. But now let's examine Revelation chapter 11, which talks about the two witnesses who come back in the tribulation and point out some similarities between Moses and Elijah and these two witnesses. So, okay, now Revelation chapter 11 and verse 3, it says, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. So these guys are going to prophesy and Moses and Elijah, as you know, are both prophets. And then Revelation 11, 4 and 5 says, These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of, proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Now notice they, don't hurt, notice they hurt men with fire. Just like Elijah did in the Old Testament in 2 Kings chapter 1 and verse 12. It says, And Elijah answered and said unto them, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. So Elijah was torching people way before the 
human torch guy from the Fantastic Four was even thought of. You see, all these fantasy superheroes are just counterfeits of actual powers that God gives to people in the Bible. But Elijah was torching people way back in the Old Testament, just like the two witnesses will. And then Revelation 11 and verse 6 says, These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Okay, so these guys have power to shut heaven. And Elijah did this also way back in the Old Testament. In James 5.17, it says, Elias, which is Elijah, was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Now notice they have power over the waters to turn them to blood. They not only have power to shut the heaven, but they have power to turn the waters to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues. And that's exactly what Moses did during the plagues of Egypt in the book of Exodus chapter 7. He turned the waters to blood. So there's yet another similarity now. Revelation 11, 7 and 8. It says, And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of that great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So just like in a lot of TV shows and movies that I watched as a lost man, the old characters that came back in his sequel would many times die in the movie for dramatic effect. You know, it's very dramatic when you have an old character from a, an older movie come back in a sequel and get killed or something. Maybe in an action movie, and they did that in horror movies. You know, I'm not endorsing the movies. It's just I'm trying to get you to realize the Hollywood movies, it's nothing but a counterfeit and just a copycat of stories from the Bible. But that's my take on who the two witnesses are. You have Moses and Elijah. And this is one of the greatest duos in the Bible. And they're much better than any buddy cop movie you may see, or Batman and Robin, or any superhero duo you may see. And they're not going to be arguing with back and forth with each other about who the sidekick is and who is the head guy. Because they're doing it all for the glory of God, not to be seen of men... And that, they're not doing it through strife and vain, for vain glory. They're doing it for the glory of God. They're coming back as the two witnesses, trying to get as many people right as they can. But who else might come back as a guest appearance in the tribulation? I believe it's a possibility the disciples, and specifically the Apostle John, may come back. You say, well, I've never heard anything like that in my life. Well, that's okay, because I'm not teaching this as a salvation issue. I don't think having this belief is a re requirement to a Bible believer or anything like that. I don't think that I'm teaching some major heresy by saying this stuff. So don't let the veins pop out in your forehead and don't let your blood pressure get high. I mean, we all believe in the blessed hope and the book and the blood. This is just one of those things you talk about with your buddies on a rainy day. So please don't get bent out of shape and don't, don't get mad. But in Matthew 10, 23, you have Jesus talking to the disciples. And he says this in Matthew 10, 23. He says, But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. So he says, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. And notice the context is the second coming. So if they will not have gone over the cities of Israel, then a son of man be come, then could they be making a guest appearance right before he comes the second time? Now, the Apostle John is even more interesting because the angel of the Lord says to John in Revelation 10, 11, it says, And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Now remember, John at this point has been carried away in the spirit into the future tribulation time period. He traveled time without a DeLorean or a flux capacitor 
and the Lord just picked him up and dropped him sometime in the future. And the angel of the Lord in the future tells him he must prophesy again before many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. So, is it a possibility? Sure. I mean, God can bring anybody back he wants to. But what about Judas, the traitor? Judas is called the son of perdition in John 17, 12. And the Antichrist is called the son of perdition in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. So when Judas died, he didn't go to the same place the rich man went in Luke 16. It says in Acts 1.25 that he went to his own place. And this place is most likely the bottomless pit spoken of in the book of Revelation. In Revelation 9.11 it says, And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. And the name Apollyon means destroyer or perdition. Just like Judas is the son of perdition. So it could be that when the Antichrist is wounded to death, gets that deadly head wound, and he resurrects, it could be that Satan will place the soul of Judas, which is in his own place in the bottomless pit, into the body of the Antichrist. Both are called the son of perdition, and Judas is even said to be a devil in John 6:70, and this is before Satan even enters into him in John 13:27. And then in Revelation 17:8, it says, "The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world." when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Now notice it says the beast that thou sawest was because Judas was alive and is not. His body is now dead. It's, in the bo it's, it's not walking around. His soul is in the bottomless pit and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. So could it be that Judas comes to make a guest appearance in the trib? A villain who comes back again to wreak havoc. Just like in the movies, an old villain coming back to wreak havoc. And then the Lord, Jesus Christ, I believe will make an appearance during the tribulation. Ever read Revelation chapter 10? I believe it's a good chance that the angel in that chapter is Jesus Christ appearing as the angel of the Lord, just like he did many times in the Old Testament. Then, of course, you have the Lord's army coming back at the second advent at the end of the tribulation. The Lord's going to come back with His army to avenge the blood that's been shed, to set up His kingdom, to kill the Antichrist and His henchmen and just take over. So the Lord's army will be made up of the saints, of course. So if you're saved, you will make a guest appearance at the end of the tribulation. Jude 14 says, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. And like I said, this is just speculation, something to talk about with your friends on a rainy day. It's not something to argue over or start a ministry over or, you know, break fellowship with someone over or start some big movement over it. It's just one of those things that you talk about for fun. I mean, if you're like me, you don't just read the Bible for comfort and just because it's your duty to read it and because, you know, just because you're commanded to. I mean, I read it for a hobby. I, I get the Bible out. I read, I read it every day. I sit and speculate on things. I pray about things, talk to the Lord about things in the Bible. And it's just entertaining to sit and think about how amazing the Bible is. And that's one reason I'm doing this study is to get, get people thinking. Maybe if it does make you mad that I'm saying these things, maybe you can study it out and make a study about how I'm completely wrong. But at least I got you in your Bible. That's one of my main purposes with these videos is I want to get people interested in the book. People don't read the book enough. Christians don't read the book enough. 
teachers and preachers don't read the book enough. I mean, you need to be getting in some chapters every day of the Bible. But I'm sure there's more that I'm not thinking of. Some believe Jeremiah may even make a comeback. Because, you know, many uh, when, when Jesus was here during his, his earthly ministry, many people thought that he was Jeremiah. They thought he was Elias. They thought he was John the Baptist. They thought that the Lord was Jeremiah coming back again. So many people believe that Jeremiah may make another appearance in the tribulation. And if you think about it, it's, it's pretty much a for sure thing that the Apostle John makes appearance in the tribulation because, I mean, he writes the book of Revelation and he's sitting there, the Lord had him sitting there looking at the events of the tribulation that haven't even happened yet. So maybe the people can't see him during those times, but, I mean, he's there. It's just like that old movie, Back to the Future. You know, they had the dude in the future, and people saw him. They had him in the past, people saw him. Maybe the people will actually see the Apostle John. I don't know, that's something to think about, pretty far out there. And then some people even believe that the 144,000 are actually some Old Testament saints that are resurrected. I don't know if I personally believe that myself, but who knows? I don't look down on anybody for believing that. And, uh, but that's pretty much all I wanted to cover on this. Maybe you can think of more. Maybe you can point out some more to me that you think will come back in the time of Jacob's trouble. But if you've made it all the way through this and you're not saved or you're not sure of your salvation, I don't like to close out a study without giving the gospel. And Paul gives us the gospel in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through 4. He says in verse 3, he says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So Jesus Christ died. He died for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. He had to die for your sins because you're a sinner. And John 3.36 lets us know that if you're not believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, then the wrath of God is presently abiding on you. It says, He that believeth on the Son hath life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. You're in danger of dying and going to hell if you're not saved. But Jesus Christ died and shed his blood. And the, the Bible says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. It says in Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It says in Acts 16, 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The gospel is simple. The plan of salvation is simple. It's easy to believe. You come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner and believe on Him and what He did on the cross to be your payment for sin and you can be saved and have eternal life. You won't have to worry about going to hell anymore. And you can make a guest appearance at the end of the tribulation because you'll be a part of the Lord's army. You'll be in your glorified body that you'll get at the rapture which happens before the tribulation. Which that rapture, that's a good sign to those unbelieving Jews in the tribulation to start out the tribulation with a big sign. Because it says in 1 Corinthians one twenty two, the Jews require a sign. And what crazy of a sign would that be having a million people gone just like that, caught up in a rapture with their clothes left behind and all that stuff. I mean, if you want to get a glorified body at the rapture, if you want to make a guest appearance at the end of the tribulation and be on the winning side, be on the Lord's army and not the devil's army, then you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But this has just been a quick study on tribulation guest appearances.